This is uh, Dr. V. Dinakar, Professor in the Department of ECU, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research. Today, now I am going to take a topic on uh, waveguides and cavity resonators. Uh, it's, it is under the subject transmission line and waveguides, uh, where uh, the course code being U18 PCE C502. So now let's uh, get into the topic. Uh, What is a TEM wave? TEM wave is a transverse electromagnetic wave. No field components in the direction of the propagation. What is TEM wave? Transverse magnetic, magnetic wave with a longitudinal electric field component in the direction of propagation. What is TE wave? Transverse electric wave with a longitudinal magnetic field component in the direction of the propagation. Uh, there's, these are the different kinds of waveforms that we um, that we used to have in the electromagnetic uh, fields. That is a TEM wave, TEM wave, and TE wave. So thus, uh, we do have uh, transverse electric wave, transverse magnetic wave, and transverse electromagnetic wave. And where uh, you see these uh, three waves with their components in the old. and now. Uh, a uniform waveguide with an arbitrary cross section has been shown in the diagram. There you see that uh, how does a waveform travels through a cable, and you see that um, we have got three axes, mutually perpendicular axis x, y, and z. How does a waveform travels through the channel? And uh, this is uh, a uniform waveguide. You see that as uh, channel being a uh, circular, and it has got um, the cross section of the channel has been shown there in the diagram very clearly. And the next one, um, the diagram, um, an enclosed conducting box, which is essentially a segment of the waveguide with closed end faces is called a cavity resonator. So what is a cavity resonator? There you could see in the diagram that various dimensions, an enclosed conducting box, which is essentially a segment of a waveguide with closed end faces is called a cavity resonator. I think, uh, they could get the meaning of it. Um, there is a, a enclosed, fully closed uh, conducting box, and essentially it should be a segment of the waveguide. All sides being closed is called a cavity resonator. That you could see the various dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, the X, we do have three axes, X, Y, and Z, where B refers to the height of the box and D refers to the length and A refers to the width. And probably it would understand from the diagram of what should be a cavity resonator. And now waveguides, coming into the waveguides. Oh, transmission lines, what do you mean by transmission lines? Support transverse electromagnetic waves. A transmission line is one which support transverse electromagnetic waves, TEM waves. Then what is a waveguide? A structure in which electromagnetic waves can propagate. There is uh, EM waves. If it is able to propagate in a structure, then that one is called as a waveguide. TLs are uh, special cases of waveguides. Transmission lines are special cases of waveguides. Waveguides support TEM waves. There is uh, when a uh, frequency is equal to zero, but also support transverse magnetic waves. That is um, when our frequency is equal to zero and transverse electric waves. That is um, when, uh, when E is equal to zero, that is when electric component is equal to zero, whereas in the previous case, waveguide supports TM waves, where uh, you see that where both magnetic component and the electric component should be e is equal to zero, where HZ refers to the magnetic component, and E is refers to the electric component, but also support transverse magnetic waves. TEM and TE modes have characteristic cutoff frequencies. There is a transverse magnetic and transverse electric modes have characteristic cutoff frequencies. Waveguides can be metallic or dielectric. General. General wave behaviors along uniform guiding structures. We should consider a strike waveguide in the form of a dielectric filled metal tube having an arbitrary cross section and lying along the x axis. 
by means of the Hellman's, Hellmer's equation, we do have del squared e plus k squared e is equal to zero, where e refers to the electric field intensity. And del squared h plus k squared h is equal to zero, where h refers to the magnetic field intensity. Where e and h are three dimensional vector phases, and k is the wave number. Where k is equal to omega into root of mu into epsilon. The three dimensional Laplacian opera operator, del squared, you know, the del squared refers to the Laplacian operator may be broken into two parts. The Laplacian operator, del squared, may be broken into two parts. That is, uh, del squared mu and mu two for the cross-sectional coordinates and del squared EZ for the longitudinal coordinate. For waveguides with the rectangular cross-section, we use Cartesian coordinates. Del squared E is equal to del squared XY plus del squared EZ, the whole thing being covered by the brackets into E. That is equal to del squared XY plus dou squared by dou is at squared into E. That is equal to del squared XY into E plus gamma squared E. Comparing the equations, comparing the equation above two equations, we do get del squared XY into E plus gamma squared plus k squared into E is equal to zero. There is a general wave behaviors along, uh, along uniform guiding structures. So as you know, that as already we know about uh, three constants, alpha being the attenuation constant and gamma is the propagation constant and beta is the phase constant. Similarly, from the equation, we do have del squared xy into h plus gamma squared plus k squared into h is equal to zero. It's equal to zero. In the Maxwell's equations, the two source free curly equations, the two source free curly equations have six components from del into E is equal to minus J omega into mu H, we do have the following components. That is, do E not, do E is it to the power zero by do Y plus gamma E Y is equal to minus J omega H, H X into mu. Again, minus gamma into E of X minus do E of Z by do f x is equal to minus j omega into mu h1. Similarly, do of e y by do x minus do of e x minus by do y is equal to minus j omega into mu h of z. Similarly, from del cross h is equal to j omega epsilon into e, we do have the following three equations. Do h of z by do y plus gamma h of y is equal to j omega epsilon e of x minus gamma into h of x minus dou h of z by dou x is equal to j omega e into e y. Dou h of y by dou x minus dou h of x by dou of y is equal to j omega epsilon into e of z. Since divergence of e is equal to zero and divergence of h is equal to zero, e and h are divergentless. This means that uh, there is electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity are divergentless. This means that there are only four independent equations in the above table. Therefore, we do have there is a, the four independent equations h of x is equal to minus one by h squared into gamma dou h of z by dou of x minus j omega epsilon into dou of e z by dou y. Then the second one being h of y is equal to minus one by h squared into gamma gamma into dou h of e z by dou y plus j omega epsilon into dou of e z by dou x. Okay, the next equation be e of x is equal to minus one by h squared into gamma into dou e z by dou x plus j omega mu into dou h of e z by dou y. And the next one being e of y is equal to minus one by h squared into gamma of dou into e z by dou y minus j omega mu into dou h of z by dou x. So these are the four independent equations. The transverse components of E and H can be expressed in terms of the longitudinal field components. E z, h z in the direction of the propagation, that is, it happens in the z direction. Therefore, h squared is equal to gamma squared plus k squared. Discussion. Single conductor wave weights cannot support the TEM waves. 
If h is non-zero and e z is equal to zero, h of e z is equal to zero, then all these transverse components p and h should will be vanishing. This means that T m cannot exist in the single conductor waveguide. If h is zero, single conductor wave, waveguides cannot support T m waves either. According to whether E z or H is that S is, the propagation waves in a uniform waveguide can be classified into three types: transverse electromagnetic waves, transverse magnetic waves, and transverse electric waves. They are denoted as T m, T m, and T e waves. So first, let's see about uh, what is the transverse electromagnetic waves. These are the waves that contain neither E z nor H z. That is, they don't have either. Um, electric field intensity component or magnetic field intensity component. We encounter TEM waves when we discuss plane waves and on waves along the transmission lines. So we happen to come across these TEM waves when, uh, when discussing about the waves along the transmission lines and the waves and uh, study of the waves in uh, plane waves. Then we come to transverse magnetic waves. These are waves that contain a non-zero E z, but H is H of Z is equal to zero. That is, it does have a electric field intensity component, but don't have a magnetic field intensity component H as H of Z is equal to zero. Then and of course the last one, the transverse electric waves. These are the waves that contain a non-zero H of Z, but E of Z is equal to zero. This means that it, it does have a magnetic component, but the electric component being electric field intensity component being zero. Then on to the mathematical part of the 10 waves, transverse electromagnetic waves. We do have for 10 waves, E of Z is equal to zero, H of Z is equal to zero, and hence H is equal to zero. That is gamma is equal to JK. Therefore, U of P is equal to omega by K is equal to one by root of mu into epsilon. That is gamma of 10 is equal to jk is equal to j omega into root of mu into epsilon, which is exactly the same expression for the propagation constant of uniform plane wave in an unbounded medium characterized by constituting constitutive parameters epsilon and mu. We can obtain the ratio between E of x and H of y from the equations and by setting E of z and H of z to zero. This ratio is called the wave impedance. Uh, the ratio of um, E of x to H of y is called as a wave impedance. That is, you know that we can go on to say that impedance of TEM, that is wave impedance of the wave, transverse electromagnetic wave, we do have the formula as E of x by H of y, that is equal to J omega into mu by gamma gamma of 10, that is equal to gamma of 10 divided by J omega epsilon. That is, is it of 10, that is impedance of transverse electromagnetic wave is equal to root of mu by epsilon, that is equal to eta. Therefore, a 10 wave propagating in the z direction, H is equal to one by z term into A of z into E, where you know that H is the magnetic field intensity where the wave impedance is Z of 10, where A Z is the unit vector along the direction of propagation that is in the Z direction, and E being the electric field intensity. For 10 waves, for transverse electromagnetic waves, you see that K, E, H form a right-handed system. You could see that K, E, and H form a right-handed system. Then now uh, we'll move on to transverse magnetic waves, TM waves. For uh, transverse magnetic waves, H of Z is equal to zero, and all the transverse components of E, H are expressed in terms of E of Z. E, H are expressed in terms of E of Z. That is, H of X is equal to J omega epsilon by H square into dou of E Z by dou Y. That is H of I is equal to minus J omega epsilon by H square into dou of E Z by dou X. That is E of X is equal to minus gamma by H square into dou of E Z by dou of X. That is E of Y is equal to minus gamma by H square into dou of E Z by dou Y. 
impedance is it of transverse magnetic wave is equal to gamma by j omega e j omega epsilon similar to that of term waves but not equal to j omega mu by gamma therefore you see that is it of tm that is impedance of transverse magnetic wave is equal to e of x by h of i that is equal to minus e of y by h of x that is equal to gamma by j omega epsilon ohms so this is about transverse magnetic waves for transverse magnetic waves where we can find h by the formula h is equal to 1 by z of tm into a of z into q e, where a is it being the unit vector along the direction of propagation that is along the uh, is a direction where is it of tm you know that that happens to be the impedance of transverse magnetic wave and e being the electric field intensity the relation between the e and h of transverse magnetic wave is of the same form as that of uh, tm waves cut off frequency of t tm waves then gamma is equal to zero that is gamma is equal to root of h square minus k square that is equal to root of h square minus omega square into mu epsilon two distinct ranges of the values for the propagation constant are noted. The dividing point being gamma is equal to zero, where we see that omega c squared into mu into epsilon is equal to h squared, or f, f c is equal to, that is, um, cut off frequency is equal to h divided by two pi into root of mu epsilon. So this is all about transverse magnetic waves where you see that you have got a formula for cutoff frequency and that is given by f of c is equal to h divided by two pi into root of mu epsilon. And the frequency f of c at which gamma is equal to zero is called a cutoff frequency. That is the way to get a cutoff frequency is that the, the simple point to, uh, to be noted about the cutoff frequency is that at the point when gamma is equal to zero, then we want to have the cutoff frequency. The value of Fc for a particular mode in a waveguide depends on the aging value of this mode. Using these equations, we can write that gamma is equal to h into root of one minus f of f of c to the whole square. That is a frequency divided over uh, divided by cutoff frequency. Then, when gamma is equal to zero, the frequency contributes only to the transverse wave number h. Such a frequency value is the cutoff frequency. That is the simple thing is that when gamma is equal to zero, then the frequency, corresponding frequency can be cutoff frequency. And next, the first condition A being f of f divided by fc to the whole square if it is greater than one or f is greater than fc in this range omega square mu into epsilon is greater than h square and gamma is imaginary we have from the equation gamma is equal to j beta that is equal to jk into root of one minus h, h by k to the whole square that is equal to jk into root of one minus fc by f whole square the phase velocity of the propagating wave in this waveguide is up that is phase velocity up is given by up is equal to omega by beta that is equal to u by root of one minus fc by f to the whole square that is equal to lambda g by lambda into u which is greater than u that is a phase velocity being uh, greater than the ordinary velocity u then u of g is equal to one by d beta by d omega that is equal to u into root of one minus fc by f to the whole square that is equal to lambda by lambda g into u that is less than u. That's thus you can get that ug into up is equal to u square. This relation is exactly the same as that of the T Broglie matter wave. Indeed, the dispersion relation of the wave in a wave guide is exactly analogous to that of a D Broglie matter. Then The wave impedance is it is a real number. That is, is it of Tm? That is, the impedance of the transverse magnetic wave is equal to eta into root of one minus Fc by f to the whole square, where Fc being the cutoff frequency, f being the normal frequency, and is it Tm refers to the you know, impedance of the transverse magnetic wave. And the second condition being 
f by f c to the whole squared is less than one, or f is less than f c. When the operating frequency is lower than the cutoff frequency, gamma is rare, and the equation can be written as gamma is equal to alpha is equal to h into root of one minus f by f c to the whole square when f is less than f c, which is in fact an attenuation constant, as you know that alpha being an attenuation constant. Since all the field components contain the propagation factor e minus e to the power minus gamma is it is equal to e to the power minus alpha is it. The wave diminishes rapidly with z and is said to be evanescent. Therefore, a waveguide exhibits the property of a high pass filter. For a given mode, only waves with a frequency higher than the cutoff frequency of the mode can propagate the guide. Substitution of the equation gives the wave impedance of a transverse magnetic wave modes for F less than fc, that is, is it of tm is equal to minus j into h by omega e into root of one minus f by fc to the whole square. That is, when f being less than of, less than that of uh, f of c. Thus, the wave impedance of evanescent transverse magnetic mode at frequencies below cutoff is purely reactive, indicating that there is no power flow associated with evanescent waves. The wave impedance is it is reactive. Then we are coming to transverse electric waves, T waves. That is, um, we are coming to in this uh, transverse electric waves, the main condition being E of z is equal to zero. That is, uh, the electric field intensity component, that is E of z equal to zero. And all the transverse components of E H are expressed in terms of H of z. E H are expressed in terms of H of z. That is h of x is equal to minus gamma divided by h squared into do h of z by do of x. h of y is equal to minus gamma by h squared into do h of z by do y. As you know, that, as you know very well, that e is equal to minus z z of t into a of a of z into h, where a z being the unit vector along the z direction where z of t being the impedance of the transverse electric wave and h being the magnetic field intensity. So with this formula, we, we, we managed to get the electric field intensity value. As you know, the formula is E is equal to minus z t into A of z into h. And now um, E of x is equal to minus j omega into mu by h squared into do h of z by do y. Therefore, E of y is equal to j omega into mu by h square into dou h of z by dou x. So impedance is it of tm waves is equal to j omega m by gamma, but not equal to gamma by j omega epsilon. But here, when it comes to the impedance of the transverse electric wave, is it of te is equal to e x divided by h of y is equal to e e y by h of by h of x, where a negative sign precedes. That is equal to j omega into mu divided by gamma. So here, when the frequency f is larger than f of c, that is, you see that when that's the condition a, f divided by fc to the whole square is greater than one, or f is greater than fc. So in this range, gamma is imaginary, and we have a propagating mode the expression for gamma is the same as there is as being given in the previous equation, where gamma is equal to j beta, that is equal to j of k into root of one minus fc by f to the whole square. Consequently, the formula for beta, lambda g, and up and ug in the equations also hold for transverse electric waves. And now you see that z of t is equal to eta divided by root of one minus f of c by f to the whole square. But f of c being the cutoff frequency, now we do have some notable points here. The first one being wavelength, phase velocity, group velocity are the same for T and TEM waves, where phase velocity is u of p, where group velocity is u of g, where wavelength is lambda of g. So here you see that this wavelength for and phase velocity, group velocity are the same for these two ways transverse electric and transverse magnetic waves. The next notable point is the wave impedance is it of T 
T, T waves is larger than the dielectric impedance, while the wave impedance is that of T, Tm wave is smaller than the dielectric impedance. So these are all some of the notable points comparing T, T and Tm waves. And now, when the frequency f is smaller than f of c, that is f by f of c to the whole square is less than one, or f being less than that of f c, in this case, gamma is real, and we have an evanescent or non-propagating mode. That is, gamma is equal to alpha is equal to h into root of one minus f of f by f c to the whole square when f is less than f c. So here, after a substitution of various equations, gives the wave impedance of T modes for f being less than f of c. That is, wave impedance. That is, the wave impedance of transverse electric waves mode is given as is it of T e is equal to j into omega mu divided by h into root of one minus f divided by c to the whole square when f is less than f c. This is this being the equation for uh, wave impedance when it comes to transverse electric wave mode. So which is a purely reactive indicating again that, that there is no power flow for evanescent waves when, whenever F is less than Fc. The wave impedance is it is reactive. There is no power flow with evanescent waves. The three types of modes, as you as you have seen all right from the start that we do have three types of modes, transverse electric, electromagnetic and transverse magnetic and transverse electric. So wave impedances and guide wavelengths for F being greater than Fc. Now, under the mode, we have, we have got a tabular column where we do have three columns. The first column being mode, wave impedance is it, then guide wavelength lambda g. For the first one being for 10 wave, we do have eta is equal to root of mu by epsilon. And the corresponding guide wavelength lambda is equal to 1 by f into root of mu into epsilon. Then the second, for the second mode, Tm, wave impedance, wave, for wave impedance is it, that is, is given as um, eta into root of 1 minus fc by f to the whole square. Then the guide wavelength, lambda is equal to lambda by one root of one minus fc by f to the whole square. Then for transverse electric wave, you see that uh, wave impedance is it that is, is given by eta divided by root of one minus fc by f to the whole square. And guide wavelength lambda g is equal to lambda divided by root of one minus fc by f to the whole square. So this tabular column in short gives the wave impedance is it and uh, guide wavelength lambda g for these three types of wave modes, that is for TEM, TM, and TE. So then we do have some other notable points from here. Wavelength, phase velocity, group velocity are the same for TE and TM waves. The wave impedance is it of TE wave is larger than the dielectric impedance, while the wave impedance is it of TM wave is smaller than the dielectric impedance. And now, thank you. Thank you for listening to the lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much.